This is not your average six and a half inch coaxial. This is the PRV MT 6CX 580-NDY-4. This is a high performance coaxial designed originally for motorcycles, but you can use in any motorsports application or even in the car or whatever else you want to put it in. So let me show you why this speaker is just different. At first glance, the MT 6CX 580 looks like a typical coaxial when you just take a look at the front here but this thing is definitely in a league of its own let's take a look at a 380 now this one is an 8 inch but just so you can take a look you know they're kind of similar mid-range with a, a cone on it but what you're looking at here is a 6.5 mid-range paired with a legit one inch compression driver not just a tweeter the compression drivers power separately. You can see it has its own terminals here and the speaker has its own terminals on this side. So with them wired on their own channel, you're getting true two-way performance in one package. This has a neodymium magnet, which means it's pretty compact and lightweight for what it really is, but it's crazy strong. And that's very important, especially in a motorcycle setting where you don't have much space to put separate components. Let's talk some more about the compression driver. The compression driver handles the high frequencies that a tweeter would handle. And this actually uses the same diaphragm as a D280 Ti. This is loud, it's clear, and it can take some decent power uh, at about 80 watts. So because the driver is separate from the speaker, you can definitely dial it in on a crossover. You can have them playing their own frequencies. And you can also balance the driver with the speaker so that one's not overpowering the other and it sounds nice and natural and clean. That you can't really do with a, a built-in coaxial such as the 380 that has the tweeter and speaker wire together. So this is basically like a full-blown pro audio setup in one speaker. Let's take a look here at the frequency response chart of the MT6CX580 showing in orange the low frequency response which is the speaker and the gray is the high frequency response which is of course the driver. So I just want to talk real quick about PRV's recommendations. So they, they recommend the high pass crossover for the speaker is 105 hertz at 12 dBs and 1800 hertz at 12 dBs for the driver. So they're saying basically 105 to 1800 and then from 1800 all the way up for the driver to get a good kind of full range sound. So I just want to give my take on the frequency response and what I recommend for high pass and low pass for this combination. The speaker comes in around 100 Hertz. Um, it rises pretty smooth and stays strong up to about three and a half to 4,000 Hertz. After that, it kind of peaks really hard, which can give you some distortion or resonance. Uh, this, is, this is outside what I would say is the ideal range uh, frequency response, usable frequency response. So the driver starts off to, you know, it starts climbing at around 2,000. So the 1800 isn't a bad, crossover uh, recommended by PRV. It does smooth out and it gets really usable, three and a half, four thousand hertz, it's pretty strong there and relatively flat up and up through the highs until about 15 to 18 thousand where obviously, you know, it'll naturally start to roll off. To get the cleanest, most natural sound, this is where I suggest uh, crossing them over right before the woofer starts to break up and when the driver starts to perform clearly, which for me is around three and a half to 4,000 hertz. So I would run the speaker on the HPF from like 120 to 150 on a BT24. Uh, that will avoid some low end distortion. And then I will cut the low pass filter at three and a half to 4,000 on an LR24 to give a smoother transition to the driver. So then going into the driver, high pass filter, I would go three and a half to 4,000 hertz right about where we cut off the speaker. Again, LR24 for a smooth transition between the speaker and the driver. And then you don't need uh, a low pass filter because it will play all the way up. And if you're using a speaker like this, you're probably not gonna be using a tweeter with it. If you are using a tweeter, you can cut it lower and then have the tweeter come in after that. These settings will avoid distortion. It keeps the woofer below the region where it starts to break up. It has a smooth handoff between the woofer and the driver and you get full range clarity. You'll get powerful mids and crisp highs without any gaps or harshness. Um, so those are my recommendations outside of what PRV recommends. You can go with what PRV says. You can take what I say and run with it or do something that you like to do.
So let's just go over real quick again what this thing is and what it can do for you. This is uh, a real compression driver, not a plastic tweeter or a dome tweeter or a silk dome or whatever you want to call it. It is a real compression driver. You do have that separate wiring, which is beautiful for tuning and balance and getting the most clarity and best full range sound out of this speaker. This is a titanium diaphragm inside here, which is perfect for high frequencies. It's not phenolic. It's not a, a polymide. It is titanium. So it does give you the brightness that you're going to need using this speaker. You have the Neo magnet, which is super powerful, even though it is f relatively small. Now, you know, this speaker is a little deep, but it's not so wide. So you do have that benefit of it being a little compact in that sense with the Neo motor. And you do get full control again with with the separate tuning and uh, you know you can wire this on on a two channel amp one you know put the driver on one side the speaker on another um, keep in mind that the speaker is four ohms and the driver is eight ohms so if you do plan to wire it on uh, one amplifier with you know just two channels or four channels or whatever you know the speaker will pull more power than the driver which is perfect because the speaker is 500 watts and the driver is 80 watts so that does work good prv has some recommendations on their website take a look at them here the first setup is uh, mdx 2000.2 at 2 ohms uh, this is a two channel two ohms per channel amplifier so you wire this is for a pair of speakers obviously you You'll wire the two speakers in parallel, giving you two ohms on one channel. That's a full 500 watts per speaker, exactly what they're asking for. And then you wire the two drivers in parallel on the other channel at four ohms. And that'll give you sufficient power. Um, with this particular amplifier, it has two separate inputs, so you can, hopefully you're using a DSP, you can go ahead and turn down the gain a little bit on the driver, because it is a little bit of power there for the driver for my liking. The second setup is with an MDX 2000.4, two ohms, two speakers per channel using two channels, and then uh, the two drivers per channel using two channels. So that's a good setup for four speakers. If you're serious about your sound and you need a six and a half inch speaker to perform like a real two-way pro audio setup, the MT6 CX580-NDY-4 is definitely the one. Whether you're building a bagger, a streetcar, a slingshot, anything in between, this speaker gives you power, clarity, and control. Hit the comments if you got any questions about this speaker. Drop a like if this video helped you decide on buying this. And don't forget to subscribe for more PRV audio content right here on 12 Volt Fever.